Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nine o'clock. I think we'll just kind of go ahead and get started. And we are waiting for one of our speakers to join us. Uh, I believe he's out on a boat and we'll be remoting in from that. So how fun is that today that when we're talking about the return of tourism, one of our speakers is joining us from somewhere out in the world. Uh, so we'll ask him some more questions about that shortly. Uh, but good morning. Thanks everyone to, for joining us uh, on this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning. May the fourth be with you. I've heard that said over and over this morning. So on May 4th, what a great opportunity for us to kick off the National Travel and Tourism Week in Paducah and to celebrate the significant impact of travel to our community um, and for tourism in here. I'm Sandra Wilson. I'm president of the Paducah Chamber and this event today, this morning, this webinar is also co-sponsored with the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau, our partner in the community that we work with very closely. So thanks to Mary Hammond and all of the staff at the Paducah CVB and to the staff here at the Chamber who helped us coordinate this. This year, uh, Nashville National Travel and Tourism Week recognizes the power of travel and the industry's role in bringing back our vibrant communities, uh, restoring the U.S. economy and rebuilding our workforce and reconnecting America. And how awesome is that? So we want to kick it off with a video that was produced uh, for Nashville Tra National Travel and Tourism Week. It sounds like I'm saying Nashville, but I'm saying national, the National Travel and Tourism Week. So here's this video. Travel, a spirit unbroken, and a power reignited, rebuilding our economy, rehiring Americans, rescuing small businesses, reviving our communities, and reconnecting America. Together, we will drive our industry's recovery and help our country move forward. We are. We are. We are. The power of travel. The power of travel. The power of travel. We are the power of travel. What a great theme uh, for that, for National Travel and Tourism Week, the power of travel. And we all believe in that and know how important it is for our community. Uh, tourism is an economic driver for our local community. Our diverse arts and culture attractions put Paducah and McCracken County on the map. Uh, not only is it a great place to visit, but we hope also is a great place to live and work. Because as people come into our community to visit us, we hope that they just fall in love with us and want to live here too. Uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, tourism spending in McCracken County totaled $273 million in 2019, supported nearly 2,500 jobs, and welcomed approximately 2.4 million visitor trips in 2019. And while those numbers, of course, declined in 2020, we know that our local hotels, our restaurants, our event centers, and other tourism-related businesses put in place safety measures so that locals and out-of-state visitors could still come and enjoy the amenities that we offer here in Paducah and McCracken County. And they were so creative. I want to just brag on all of our small businesses and everyone that's touched by travel and tourism for being so creative and how that they could provide their services and reaching out and just still being committed. Uh, to our community. So today we celebrate the critical importance of travel and tourism in our community and welcome what we want to call the welcome, the return of tourism in Paducah. Um, I will say this morning, WPSD is live streaming today's call. Uh, we're also recording this call and we'll post the video later on the Chamber's website at uh, paducachamber.org and on our Facebook page in case you want to watch it again or share the video with someone who could not attend. If you have questions during the webinar, if you're on Zoom, you can enter those in the chat box or if you uh, want, you can also email me. I'll be monitoring my email at swilson at paducachamber.org so we can try to get those questions worked in a little bit later. I'm not, we'll just, depending on the time, uh, uh, we'll try to get as many as we can. We are monitoring Facebook, but I can't promise that we'll get as many questions in from the Facebook. So try to put those in the chat or in, email them to me. My co-host today is my good friend, Mary Hammond, the Executive Director of the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau, or CVB. Um, as the official destination organization for Paducah, 
the Paducah Convention Investors Bureau is committed to increasing economic opportunities and promoting the value of our community as a quality place to work, live, and invest by raising awareness and participation in cultural assets. So we put together a great panel uh, touching upon many different areas today, and um, Mary Hammond is going to introduce our speakers for today. Thank you, Mary. You're on mute. Sorry, getting a quick text there as well. Um, <laughs> I think that our um, one speaker is having a little bit of a hard time connecting. So we, we will improvise. But in the meantime, thank you, Sandra. It's my honor to introduce today's speaker. Uh, John Wagner is the founder, chairman, and CEO of American Queen Steamboat Company, a leader in US river cruising based in New Albany, Indiana, just up the river. Founded in 2011, the company's fleet of U.S. flight riverboats sail America's heartland and the Pacific Nor Northwest on itineraries from eight to 23 days. The American Queen Steamboat Company was founded with the purchase of its flagship vessel, American Queen, offering authentic and timeless experiences inspired by the palatial steamboats of the Mark Twain era. The new American Countess debuted last month, joining the American Queen and the American Duchess on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Under John's leadership, American Queen Steamboat Company has seen tremendous growth, climbing to 1,200 employees and expanding to seven vessels. Prior to founding the American Queen Steamboat Company, John served as Director of Marine Operations at Hornblower Cruises and Events. John received a Master's of Business Administration and a Bachelor of Science degree in Marine Biology from California Polytechnic State University. Gina Stover is president of the Charleston office of Lou Hammond Group. Gina has helped spearhead the growth of Lou Hammond Group since joining the firm in 1998. Her current capacity, in her current capacity, she oversees a broad portfolio of accounts in hospitality, tourism, real estate, economic development, the arts, consumer products, and technology. A native, native of Little Rock, Gina graduated from Baylor University in Waco, Texas with a degree in history and political science. After graduation, Gina honed her public affairs skills as an intern in the Clinton White House. She went on to work in the cruise and hospitality industries and later joined Lou Hammond Group as an account executive in the New York office. Michelle Campbell is the executive director of the Paducah McCracken County Convention and Expo Center. She manages a 150,000 square foot full service venue, providing services to conventions, expos, and indoor sports. Michelle is a senior business development and management professional with expertise in strategic business planning and managing multi-million dollar budgets. Her strategic planning and ex execution background, market analysis and account management inform her mindful but com competitive approach. So we're going to start with John. So Mary, I, I don't think John is on yet. No. Was? I believe Michael Hicks is assisting him and Michael will probably stand in for John on, until he can make a connection. But it's good that we're going to start with a video from the American Queen Steamboat Company. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll do that. And Gina, be ready. <laughs> There's a place where the streets sing and the rivers serenade. Drinks flow freely and smiles are abundant. Prime steak and lobster dinners with one-of-a-kind people and bountiful adventure free for the taking. This is the America we celebrate. Never does she fail to lift our spirits. I got this feeling rising through the ceiling singing ooh ooh darling you got me feeling alright. Let me show you how I was made to hold you. So lose your shoes and dance with me dance with me, dance with me tonight. Dance with me tonight. Into the heart of the USA, aboard the great paddle wheelers of the American Queen Steamboat Company, 
the highest rated river cruise line in the land. American Queen, largest steamboat ever built for leisure cruising. American Duchess, with two-story loft suites to capture the magnificence of the Mississippi. American Empress, for intimate exploration of the Pacific Northwest. And our newest steamboat, the incomparable American Countess, meticulously crafted with classic elegance and 80-foot floor-to-ceiling windows for expansive shoreline views. An all-inclusive journey served with our signature Southern hospitality. Open bars with included selected beverages, craft beers, and world-class wines. Regionally inspired dining, artfully plated. Elaborate stage shows, enriching stories, and late night lounge performances. I got this feeling, rising to the ceiling, singing. Reignite your spirit with those who share your admiration for our legendary lands and rivers. The majestic Mississippi with its soulful cities. Columbia and Snake River with their astounding scenery. The Great Lakes and remote regions with our sister line, Victory Cruise Lines. Explore colorful cities close to home in chauffeured comfort on our custom hop-on, hop-off motor coaches exclusively yours aboard the award-winning American Queen Steamboat Company. Uniquely American River Cruises. Well, if that doesn't make you excited, I don't know what would. I wasn't even hungry and I'm starving. That food looked delicious. The entertainment looked so much fun. I see that John Wagner has now joined us. So John, I, I don't know if you're able to turn your camera on and let us see where you are, but we're gonna turn it over to you and let you tell us where you are and some more about the American Steamboat Company. Hey, I, I made it. How about that? Let me hit one more view button here and yeah. Hey, so um, thanks guys, uh, very excited. As you can see, I'm actually uh, joining you from my stateroom on board the American Duchess today. And so I, I get to report live how things are going on the river, what we're doing. And the other good news is I get to see you face to face in Paducah this Friday. So we're, um, we're very excited. So number one, thanks for inviting me to join this panel. And uh, number two, uh, because I am on the river, because there's a storm going through and because I have a somewhat unstable internet connection, if I fall off or get hit by lightning, uh, my kicks will, uh, will start to cover for me. But great to see everybody. So. Uh, thanks for playing the video. Um, I think that video, you know, says an awful lot about what we're doing, but uh, just a little, it, it tells you really about American Queen Steamboat Company, and so I probably won't go through much of that again, but what I will tell you about is about how we're returning to the rivers, our protocols, uh, what Paducah has to offer, um, and our increased presence on the Ohio River. So I'll just start with, um, hey, on board the American Duchess here, uh, we are operating our ninth trip so far, and our ninth trip with uh, no issues at all. Uh, part of that is our very, very, I, I would say, stringent protocols. So we suggest when our guest book, we suggest that before they ever, well, number one, uh, as of July 1st, we are mandating 100% uh, vaccination for both crew and passengers. I know from doing a toast last night and checking with most of our guests, almost all of our guests on board are already vaccinated. And so they feel comfortable traveling. The other interesting thing is I think about 70% of the guests that we had on board were repeat guests. And so, you know, that is just great to see. Um, but our protocols are, we suggest that you, number one, get vaccinated before you travel. Uh, number two is that you take a, a PRC, a COVID test, prior to flying because the last thing in the world we want is for you to get way excited about going on a trip and then find that you check into the hotel because now with our new protocols, we've included a pre-hotel night stay in every voyage. As part of the check-in, we have a nurse on board and we our relationship is with Vican Medical and we uh, do a PRC test. Uh, we send you those results on your phone, we get a report 
And uh, right now, I think out of eight trips on this boat and seven trips on the American Countess, uh, we've only had one guest that we've had to turn away. We found several crew members that came in, but you know, even now we test 100% of our crew. So, you know, once you get inside, you're in the bubble, and which makes it great. And so, uh, you know, that 100% of crew and passengers that come on board have have to be tested. Uh, I do have to say too, our protocols are so stringent that if I just try and come on the board on board to say hi to someone, I have to get a PRC test. And so it really limits the amount of, of times that you just come on to say hi to people. But I know personally, I've been tested, I think yesterday morning was my ninth test, you know? And so, uh, but it's great because everybody's in that bubble. And even with the American Countess christening, I know, you know, we have a big drive to market, but to keep people in a bubble on the way home, we took a, the christening trip was from um, New Orleans to Memphis, but there was 30 of us from Louisville. So we just took a bus home. So we were all in the same bubble. And so our guests feel safe. Uh, I know Cruise Critic just did a survey and 81% of guests surveyed said they would feel comfortable traveling, uh, you know, on a boat where 100% of the guests and 100% of the crew were vaccinated. But, but enough on that. But I will say our guests last night and our crew members are so excited to be back and traveling. So a little bit more about Paducah about uh, why we like coming to Paducah, how many times we're gonna be there. So I will just say, first of all, I'll start with the Ohio River. Uh, we are making a big, big push and you'll see in our itineraries uh, that we're starting to favor the Ohio River. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, number one, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, Claudette and I live right on the Ohio River. Uh, number two is New Albany, our corporate office is right on the Ohio River. Uh, but there's a lot of other things, you know, is um, most of our guests, now that we're in our eighth year of business, a lot of our guests have already been on the Mississippi River. And the number one requested trip now is on the Ohio River. And, um, and from a navigation point of view, we love that because number one, there's less traffic. Um, number two, there's less competition. Uh, we all hear about Viking coming into the market, but Viking won't be on the Ohio River because uh, they can't build docks here. And so they can, but they, um, it'd be very expensive. And so with our boats that push right into the bank and, and dock just like we do at the city front in Paducah, uh, it's great. So in 2021, we're gonna have 31 trips to Paducah, but in 2022, a whopping 42 trips to Paducah. So I, I know with, you know, you're with the Paducah area chamber. So you ask me, geez, John, why uh, so many trips to Paducah? And that short answer is our guests love to come there. And he said, but tell me why they love to come there. Well, you have so much to offer. Uh, the quilting museum, um, you know, the, um, uh, the, the River Discovery Center, uh, the wineries you have, the new distilleries that you have, uh, the restaurant. Uh, it's a great running town. I'm a runner. I get off the boat and I love running around town. I love some of the art galleries. And then uh, we love your extra friendly people. And so, you know, that's really it. And I think I've probably gone through my tent. Um, but uh, we're just very excited to be there. Can't wait to be there on Friday. Can't wait to see everyone. And uh, so I will be quiet and turn it over to the next panelist. Well, John, I'm afraid we're going to lose you. So if it's okay with Gina and Michelle, I might ask you one or a couple of just a more specific questions, if that's okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. please. So on Friday, you will be here with the American Queen? Is the, is the, the boats coming and docking? Yeah, no, it is actually going to be the American Duchess. Uh, the American Queen, because of CDC, we don't believe we can start operating the American Queen uh, till about the end of July right now. But we're on the American Duchess. Okay, great. So people, I know they can't get on the boat or anything, but they can still drop by and look at it and wave oh at Oh my your God, yes. They can drive by. <laughs> yeah, they can drive by and say, what a gorgeous riverboat that is. And they can, uh, you know, get some information from uh, about how to book a trip. I, I will say though that it's a really interesting because of the pent up demand, we all hear about it. And some people say, is there really pent up demand? I mean, we are almost sold out for the whole season. And uh, right now our bookings are really starting to rotate a lot into 2022 uh, because the demand is so strong. And a boat like the American Duchess only carries 166 passengers. Um, you know, uh, in the video you get to see, I mean, I wish I could show you the room. I, 
Luckily, they put me in one of the owner suites. Uh, and I always tell them, no, sell it. Put me in an inside stateroom. But um, because it was a founder's cruise that we're on, they said, nah, John, we'll, uh, we'll be nice to you and Claude at this time. But our loft suites, the two-story loft suites, the dining areas, you know, on the main deck, it's 18 foot, you know, between bulkheads. And so you get these big 12 foot windows in the dining room. So when people drive by the boat, absolutely, they, they will see it and they'll love it. Great. Thank you for choosing Paducah uh, as one of your stops. And as you know, we're making improvements uh, on our riverfront that will welcome you even more by a new uh, landing dock for you uh, that will make it much easier for getting your guests off and on uh, as they come here to Paducah. So thank you so much. I think Mary had a comment she wanted to make. Yes. Thank you for joining us, John. I must say, when I look through the catalog of all the uh, of the cruises and I see the themes of the cruises. It's like how we sell Paducah. We're so hand in hand. It, right. the, the heritage, the food, the, the music, um, the culture, it's, uh, it's all, it, we're, we're such partners and thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your, your crew that works so closely with us uh, in planning the stops. Thank you. Yeah, no, Mary, yeah, thanks. And, you know, Shelly Hartfield and Gary Frommel get a lot of that, um, you know, a lot of credit for that. And, and Sandra, you know, um, I thank you for saying thanks for choosing us, but it's actually the other way around. Uh, it's our customers choose you and our customers choose you because of what you have to offer. And it's really true. And I try and reiterate that to most cities because when the cities uh, come to us and say, John, what do you need? I said, really, we need a boat ramp to dock. We need some water and we need a trash bin. But they said, but how do we really get you there? I said, well, you know, it's our guests that vote. You know, our guests, they have a lot of different itineraries to choose from. And by you guys offering something special, which you do in the uniqueness, and, and it's really, you know, the fact that you know, both Mary and Sandra, you've talked to your merchants to go out of your way to say, hey, you know, when the boat is here, if you're open, if we send down a greeting committee, if we roll out the red carpet, you know, our guests love that because our, our guests really do. They come from all over. And what they want is an authentic Americana experience. They don't want flashy. They want, this is the heartland of America. And that's why I think Paducah does such a great job you know, with um, the culinary offerings you have, uh, the wines. Um, uh, we, I believe we're working on a full boat charter for a quilting charter. And one of the things as we, you know, start to uh, get three boats on the river, I mean, we have had more themes, you know, the, they're the entertainment themes where we have Lee Greenwood on board for six trips. Uh, you know, there's a founder's cruise where Claudette and I get to come on. There's a culinary cruise. Is that we're also in 2022 going to have a golf cruise where you get to play a different golf course every day. Um, so, you know, we try and do things that our customers want. And, you know, because of people like Mike uh, and Gina that keep promoting that, you know, uh, we're, we're selling out. And that's why we're looking at, you know, 2022 and 2023. And we're already booking for 2023. So thanks for rolling out the red carpet for us. Uh, can't wait to see you guys uh, on Friday in person. Well, I have to tell you, it's not just a red carpet. Those are red coats as well. Our Paducah ambassadors, right. um, just we couldn't do it without them as they're there to, uh, to greet the passengers and the crew. We look forward to seeing you Friday. Thank you, John. Great. Thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate you joining us. I hope you can stay on. If you can't, we certainly understand and appreciate Michael making the arrangements for you to be with us today. Where where are you approximately? Do you have it? Where are you? Yeah, yeah, we're in Brandenburg and that's why I don't have any cell signal. Uh, there was a big storm going through. And so that's why Michael and I started testing connections at eight o'clock this morning and then it was having an issue. But uh, luckily, um, I got a secure network, uh, a satellite uh, connection that, that puts me here, and it looks pretty stable right now, and it looks like the uh, storm is pretty much past us by, but uh, no, I mean, this is it. This is live from the river uh, with guests every night, and so we give you the firsthand experience about what we're seeing, what our guests are seeing, and really, again, you guys will see it, how happy our crew uh, and our passengers are just to be back on the river and the fact that uh, we're finally getting to reopen. Uh, the band last night when they started, I mean, everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, teared up because they said, hey guys, this is the first time that, that, that we, we rotate bands. So they, they came through and they said, this is the first time in over a year that we've seen each other and been able to perform with each other. So really great. So 
Thanks. We're, we're excited about coming. And sorry, my 10 minutes is up. And I'm like always, I'm dominating the conversation. I don't mean to do that, but I get so excited talking about our boats. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, John. We're so excited to have you and we'll see you on Friday. And so we're now. All right. I'll stay on. We'll see you then. We're going to switch gears. All right. Thanks. Thanks. With the Lou Hammond Group, who works uh, so much with the Paducah community and our region, trying to uh, make sure that our uh, brand is out there and so works very closely with our CVB. So, Gina, would you like to, could you take over and fill us in now? Sure, I sure will. And um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, we have been working with Mary Hammond and her team since 2014. Uh, as well as John Wagner and his team since 2011. I had to look at those dates, but we have had a wonderful partnership. Uh, we've also been working with Kentucky Tourism for the past three years. So um, it's been just a great partnership with all three entities. And what's been so exciting is um, coming out of this pandemic um, from American Queen, as, as John was saying, and Paducah that, um, you are where travelers want to be right now. The, when they have their vac that second vaccination, the vaccination uh, mindset kicks in and they are looking for the experiences that Paducah and American Queen have to offer. So according to the research, uh, seven in 10 people are ready to book a vacation and nearly 88% of people have vacations planned for the next three months. And um, I think it's like 61% or 71% are planning for, um, you know, traveling for later this year. So people are on the move. If they're not on the move, they're planning to be on the move. And what's so great about Paducah is that, you know, we're, we're a small city where um, we can be still socially distant and feel comfortable, but we have the wonderful things that larger cities um, have to offer. So from, uh, restaurants to cultural institutions to uh, shopping and just that that walking that downtown walking vibe. I mean, people are looking to um, enrich themselves and explore, and um, we think that Paducah is is right there in the heart of that. So, um, um, Carrie, if you wouldn't mind um, pulling up a couple of slides, uh, we have we're just you know, we wouldn't be a PR agency without having a little show and tell. So uh, we've had some great coverage in the last uh, few months. Uh, the first um, clips, series of clips I'd like to show you are from Southern Living. Uh, Paducah was voted one of the best small towns in the South. So we were thrilled with that accolade. Um, in addition, we, had, we were the best barbecue joint and um, and the best place for shopping. So uh, we kind of cleaned up the, the best list of Southern Living in this past um, issue. And so the next slide I'll show you is uh, Travel and Leisure. And in February, we were voted one of the best places to travel in the month of February, which was terrific as, um, you know, people were just starting to even think about traveling, that Paducah was top of mind. Um, among a group of discerning travelers um, who read this publication. And then it was also syndicated to msn.com and where a number of people saw all the great things that Paducah has to offer. And then the next slides are celebrating um, Quilt Week's 30 year anniversary. So congratulations to Quilt Week, to Quilt Museum. Congratulations to the museum. Uh, we have such a great partnership working with you all and um, the anniversary was so exciting. Uh, Forbes, uh, the cultural ed editor for Forbes uh, wrote a piece on the, the celebration and then Southern Living did as well. And we'll go to our next slide, uh, Departures Magazine. Uh, this is a, a, a publication that caters to the more of the luxury traveler. And um, they profiled um, some virtual cooking classes uh, that Sarah Bradley was offering um, throughout the pandemic. So again, the timing was great. The beginning of the year as people are you know, thinking about um, what the future holds for this year, just get, getting Paducah. Um, in their mind and getting them excited about some of the culinary, culinary assets that you offer. And then of course, lots of fanfare about riverboats returning to Paducah. Um, 
there's just there's been such an excitement and you know it's great to see uh, larger groups of guests um, coming into the destination and then last but not least sports sports tourism is so important and I mean I found um, throughout my career whenever there's a crisis whether it's um, weather related or any kind of crisis that you can always count on the sports travelers because you know they, they aren't going to miss those those games, those, those kids have worked so hard and the parents are excited to support them. And so we're thrilled to be working with Michelle and her team to, pull, to promote sports in Paducah as well. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Michelle. That was a great transition, Michelle. Open it up wide, wide open for you now. So uh, if you drive by the convention center on the weekends, you're going to see the parking lot full. And I've been there. Uh, my niece came from Southern Illinois for volleyball tournaments. And I know you've had a lot of other events going on. So Michelle, please fill us in on what all you're doing. Sure. <clears throat> Good morning. And thank you, Sandra and Mary, for inviting me to be on this webinar. I'm excited to share with you and those who aren't familiar with what we are doing here at the convention center and also bring others up to date. Just a quick update on what's going on in the event industry. I mean, we all know that COVID has affected every industry, but the event industry was hit particularly hard. Uh, we are seeing some projections within the industry that is showing signs of recovery. Uh, however, our, our business model and the way we operate is has completely changed. Planners are no longer asking about date availability, what our rates are, or inquiring about the space. They're asking about safety protocols, technical solution, and food and safety beverage service options. Uh, the question we are all asking is when, when are we projected to see trade shows, corporate meetings, and conferences return? Uh, most recent projection shows that trade shows will lead in the progress toward recovery followed by associations. Uh, attendees, have for trade shows usually drive to their destination, which reduces their exposure. And because associations don't have the liability issues that corporations generally have, we'll see the progress in association markets. And we have, we have seen those with calls and uh, information that they're gathering to be here. Uh, corporate meetings and conferences will be a slow return. Several factors have corporate meetings lagging other market sectors. First and foremost, many corporations are still restricting employee travel. Large companies in particular are risk adverse and budget restrictions due to COVID has heavily impact this, second, this sector of the market. North Star Meeting Group did a survey meeting with, planner, with meeting planners and promoters last month and asked about the return of events. Uh, and the latest results from that poll survey research showed that for the first time since the pandemic struck, more than 10% of planners, our primary focus is booking new events. 60% of those planners expected to be back meeting face-to-face -face again in the second half of this year. Right now, industry is predicting 75% recovery to pre-COVID levels by the end of 2022. However, the sports industry has definitely been the silver lining in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, sports industry were, was among the few market segments that did not come to a halt in 2020. Youth sports in particular have shown to be very beneficial to their communities and the youth sport market remained strong even during the height of the pandemic. And that is, that's exactly what we are seeing here in Paducah with the indoor sports and we'll continue to see once the outdoor sports complex is completed. Let me get my slides here. Yes, say, Michelle, did you have slides that you wanted to show with that? I do, they're coming. Okay, great. Great. All right, can you, can you see them? Okay, uh, actually, hold on a minute. Let's try that again. Let's stop sharing that. Sorry, this is the first time I've done the share thing here. All right, I can't figure out what's going on. 
Michelle, while you're doing that, I've been so proud with the way Paducah really got it together during COVID, not only with safety protocols, but looking at other alternatives, such as working the partnership with the Paducah McCracken, McCracken County, um, with the McCracken County Sports Tourism Commission to put that flooring in the Expo Center and to go after a whole new market and to the city and tourism and the chamber and, uh, and Paducah Power, is, uh, all of us working together and making that pivot from straight tourism promotion to quality of life. So I'm really proud of our city. I think that we were quick on our feet and I think it's showing that our, in our recovery that, that uh, we're moving right along. So Michelle? Can I'm you see my screen? Yes. Okay, because it keeps going away on my side. Um, so, um, so in this industry, we are very dependent on our community partners. These partners help. These partners help provide the tools we need to be an economic generator for our community and help us stay relative and competitive. Closer working relationships with our partners mean that the convention center clients will have a better access to Linda and the CVB services and other community partners. These ties make planning fluid, it reduces the roadblocks and keeps communication streamlined, making it much easier for planners to get things done because we are working as a team. As I mentioned, we work very closely with Linda. She's a sales director at the Paducah CVB. She helps with coordinating marketing events for events hosted here at the facility. She arranges transportation, hotel accommodations, and all other above and beyond services for our clients. She coordinates rebates and discounts for promoters within the industry, hospitality industry, and she helps public awareness about Paducah and that feeds into all markets creating an economic generator for our region. She follows leads and develops relationships with promoters that bring those that business to Paducah. Our, if it weren't for the McCracken County Sports Commission, we would not have been able to add sports to our market segment. Their investment of approximately $670,000 purchased 40,000 square feet of hardwood sports court and equipment, which equates to four full-size basketball courts and eight full-size volleyball courts. Sports tourism is the fastest growing sector of the travel industry and equates to $7 billion. The tourism industry has started to recognize sports tourism as an important market. The Kentucky Tourism estimates visitors spend in, here in McCracken County about $189.90 per person per day in transportation, recreation, retail, food and beverage, and lodging. Sent from September of 2020, when we opened our facility to March of 2021, we have had over 32,000 attendees over the 104 days that we've held events. Our highest month of attendance was in March with approximately with approximately 2,759 players and spectators each day for the three-day event. And hotel occupancy for that month was 83.8%. So our largest volleyball tournament was the Shamrock Classic. Oops, sorry, it was the Shamrock Classic. We had 64 teams, 2,690, or 2,691 players and spectators each day of that tournament for the three-day tournament. Our largest basketball tournament is, was our basket, our largest basketball tournament was a Reebok Midwest showdown. We had 38 teams, 2,000 or 2,000 players and spectators each day for that three-day event. And the most exciting news that we've had since opening comes from the Reebok Midwest Showdown. In this tournament, we were featured on ESPN and we were the number six of the daily top 10. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. Let's keep it in basketball. 16 and under Reebok Midwest Showdown. Three seconds left, oh, point three left. Excuse me, Will Harmon toss it in with two hands. Fades away right there, somehow gets it on target. Metro Heat win at the buzzer. Great shot. 
So we, not bad for the first six months. <laughs> so uh, we are excited about the future and we are looking forward to see the return of our industry and conferences and expos and especially the sports. So thank you. Michelle, can you tell us what you have uh, book scheduled going forward for the summer and the fall? So we have the next two weeks, we do, we don't, or the next, our next tournament is in two weeks. And then we are booked through July, August, most of September, October, and then November and December are completely booked. And that's for volleyball, basketball? Most of those are basketball during the summer. Volleyball will pick back up in the fall and, and basketball in the fall too. And then that volleyball will continue to the spring of next year. And volleyball, basketball is all year. They always want to play. So, so that, they're, they're, that market is keeping us the busiest. So when you drive through your parking lot, where do you see cars from? We, so we have reached seven different states. That's, that's the most that we've reached up till now. Okay. I, well, I've driven through it. I've seen Illinois, Missouri. Oh, Arkansas. yes, yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Illinois is a big one. Missouri, Tennessee. If you, yes, absolutely. Okay. But there still is um, time for quilting. We do have quilts for, um, we do have dates for the American Culture Society Quilt Week. So that's exciting. So things do uh, continue. And uh, um, one thing that we didn't mention, but uh, Jana and Lou Hammond Group has done work with the American Culture Society as well. So we kind of sort of hit on all burners with our, um, our PR and the uh, Convention and Expo Center. So we, we really look forward to this whole team working more closely together. So I must say one thing, Michelle, uh, we did reach 83.3 percent that that wasn't the whole month occupancy or um, we'd be building some really big hotels here <laughs> so, uh, but we we have reached that 83 percent in fact we had some nights if you talk to the hoteliers Michelle they tell us that they're full and yep. uh, that's become quite uh, common for us um, on the weekends um, to see pretty close to to uh, capacity but that doesn't mean that we just don't have that business travel. We're very fortunate here in Paducah not to have all of our eggs in one basket, but we do have good business travel during the week. And you'll see Tuesdays and Wednesdays are really uh, almost equivalent to the weekends with, um, with business in the hotels. And I think the restaurants would back that up as well. But the sports teams have definitely been there for us and gotten us back on our, our feet through this period and we're going to carry that through for the years to come. And I'm really excited. Samir, when you talk about the quilt uh, week, are you talking about for 2022? Yes. Yes. 2022. Um, and uh, hopefully then we've got more years to come after that. So uh, yes, this is this year the all quilting is uh, pretty quiet through 2021. So 2022, now that doesn't mean the quilters are not, they are very loyal to Paducah and they're still stopping here. They're still going to uh, the National Quilt Museum. They're still uh, knocking on that door at Hancock Fabrics and, and uh, wishing they would open soon. So um, they're still, you find them downtown. We're still seeing those girlfriend getaways, uh, people coming uh, to, to Paducah to be inspired um, by uh, their creative, um, dreams, I guess I would say. So this is still very good, and we're, but we hit on many burners, and that's good. Okay. Hey, John, would you or Michael want to talk about when you are here on Friday, uh, your, your guests will be getting off, off the boat, getting on your buses. Can you talk a little bit about what your protocols are for what they will be doing? Yeah, so our protocols... Um, uh, we've limited a 49 passenger bus, we've limited to 24 people, and we still have uh, several different tours uh, that they take them on um, and that guests sign up for, and we've just tried to keep the interaction uh, limited, like um, uh, I'll just, for example, on some of the plantation tours now, some of them are self-guided and others. Uh, the big question that everybody has is, hey, when can we start wandering around? When can we start going back in shops? Um, it, it uh, as you know, the, the uh, governor of Kentucky uh, is trying to wait till we get a few more people vaccinated and then remove all the restrictions. 
uh, our guests are chomping at the bit because, um, you know, to do that because they really do want to get into smaller shops. Uh, we're, you know, we've kind of cautioned them a little bit to say, look, I know you want to. Our biggest concern is that if we have any positive tests on COVID, you know, that CDC shuts us down. So we said we, we need you to be a little bit more careful than that uh, for a few more weeks. But, um, but yet we're still doing, uh, you know, all the, um, the, uh, the VIP tours. Uh, in Paducah, I, I didn't look at my schedule, I should have been advanced uh, which tours they can sign up for. But yeah, our, our bus protocols, 24 people and all members are tested. Okay, great. And you expect to open that up as you closer to the summer with your tours where they have more freedom to walk around the city. We, we do. I mean, the world is opening up and, you know, right now we're following uh, both, you know, local and state restrictions. And so uh, once Governor Bashir starts to open that up, you know, we'll, uh, you know, some places are starting to relax uh, the mask standards. Uh, we have a lot of passengers because, you know, the standards say that you don't have to have your mask on when you're eating or drinking. So we give everybody their, uh, their American Queen steamboat water bottle, you know, because we're kind to the river. We, we do away plastic. So you see people walking around like this, you know, all day long. So I thought I was going to drink uh, I don't want a water bottle. So they don't have to put their mask on. And, and then as always, when you're on a boat, you want to have a good time. So they have a cocktail in their hand. And so, but they, they are um, reducing, uh, lim uh, uh, reducing those restrictions. And yeah, we can't wait till everybody's back and uh, no restrictions at all. I, well, John, you opened the door on that one. I know you've got some bourbon themed cruises as well. And of course, Barrel and Bond there at the top of the, the riverfront is just uh, dying for the passengers to get off and start exploring. But uh, we, you know that we talked a little bit about the themes of the cruises and, and Paducah really um, dovetails into to those themes. But I, I've always been so pleased with how, how much the passengers enjoy our cultural attractions. You know, uh, the National Quilt Museum and the River Discovery Center and the Railroad Museum, all of these are so tied to the heritage of the river and, um, and life along the rivers. Um, the Hotel Metropolitan, I believe the, the uh, passengers voted that one of their favored stops. Uh, Miss Maggie right. uh, really tells a good story. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, the Mary, they do. And so, uh, what Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, John, can, go ahead. I know I was going to say, yeah, our passengers love that. And Mary, you're absolutely right. I mean, Paducah is a great fit for us and it dovetails with everything. And, uh, you know, when you mentioned your, uh, you have you know, some, some great wineries and a couple of great distilleries and, uh, you know, we always break tradition. We've christened our last three vessels with bottles of bourbon, not champagne. Uh, we do have bourbon cruises. We've had bourbon tastings on board. So yeah, we can't wait to include uh, some of your local distilleries in that. So sorry, Sandra, go ahead. No, I was just going to mention that we have had a question about, would you be interested in a car museum in the Paducah area? So I guess we're asking for those, is, is that something that is a popular stop uh, in communities? <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, so, Sandra, I mean, I, I'm already out of time, and so, but but I, I will, so first of all, um, I, I take it it's a leading question for John Wagner, because for those of you that know me, uh, you know, I collect classic cars, and um, unfortunately, during COVID, uh, I think in the last year, I bought five cars, and as my wife Claudette will tell you, it's kind of helped get me through COVID, because I, uh, I, I put two of those cars in our garage and I'm always working on in the middle of the night and uh, everything else. So um, our guests love that. In fact, on the next chairman's cruise, um, we actually go to the Corvette Museum. Um, uh, one of our board, um, uh, our board members, um, uh, he's also on the board of directors for Pratt Miller that has the Corvette racing team. So we're trying to get one of the Corvette drivers uh, that was in the 24 hours at Daytona to come and speak. So yeah, in fact, if you need to put me in touch with whoever's talking about opening that car museum and I can help them and I'm looking for a place to park three or four of mine because I'm running out of space. So I'd love to do it. So I take it that's a leading question, but love to chat with anybody that, that but, but our short answer is, um, you know, you look at our demographics and our demographics fit exactly that. Uh, they're baby boomers. And right now, just because I am on 
the local car auction websites and everything else. I mean, um, classic car prices are going through the roof and it's because folks like uh, my age group that have done well and are looking for something to do, it, it, you know, it's back to the future, it's nostalgia. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I have a 71 El Camino and the reason I have that is, you know, when I walked to, to high school, I walked by the Chevy dealer and I saw one. I said, hey, one of these days when I grow up and can actually afford one, I'm gonna get one of those. And then uh, we bought another car that my wife Claudette was driving a 68 black Camaro convertible that she thought she was in high school and picked the neighbors up and they go driving through the neighborhood with the wind blowing through the hair. So absolutely car museum, sign me up. I didn't know that was a leading question, but boy, that was a great answer. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely a leading question. Have them come down the boat on Friday and we'll chat and we'll trade car pictures. All right, I'll let them know. Hey, uh, Gina, is there um, one magazine that you would say loves Paducah more than any other magazine or any kind of inside scoop on that? Yeah, uh, well, Southern Living is a big fan. We, I just showed you multiple clips out of there. Um, I think Style Blueprint is also a great outlet for us. Um, it, they target Nashville and um, some other Southern cities. So I, those are sort of the two darlings. But I mean, we've, we've had coverage. I mean, we've had coverage in the New York Times, on CNN.com. You know, we've had all kinds of great um, national coverage, but those those two are particularly fond of Paducah. Great, and believe me, we have a long list of things that we discuss with Blue Hammond in our meetings of ideas to pitch. And I do love that um, the Hotel Metropolitan was picked up by the oldest uh, African-American newspaper in the United States, am I correct? Yes, um, yes. What's the name, I've, I've forgotten. The Amsterdam News in, out of New York. We, we are um, aware of so many activities in our community, uh, trying to get that word out. You never know what, what magazine, what newspaper is going to pick up an idea, when you're going to find somebody who has an interest in cars that you may not have thought did, <laughs> that, that all of a sudden leads to something else. So it's um, just being aware of the community. And Gina, thank you for all of your wonderful contacts. One of the coolest things that Lou Hammond does, I think for us, is um, they arrange these side-by-side -side meetings. And so, so Laura Oswald from our office will go to um, meet with writers and editors and um, magazines, um, you know, newspapers, um, have dinner with them, get to know them and share about Paducah. But those side-by-sides are, are such intimate, um, good discussions leading to good coverage for Paducah. Absolutely. Yeah, and Laura is a pro. <laughs> So I'm pulling up the weather for Friday, John. It looks like it's going to be a high of 68 and sunny. So that's great for you and all of your guests. And Michelle, I think you're having food truck Friday at the convention center this Friday night. We are. So come out. Yeah, we are. Come out and see us. You want to tell us about that real quick? Uh, we have eight trucks coming down. And also we have a family, uh, family activities for people to do. It's from six to eight. And we have the Paducah band is going to be here from the high school. Tillman Jazz Band is going to be here. So, yeah, come out and support them. Great. So, Mary, do you have any uh, uh, kind of, I'm going to try to wrap it up here and keep us within close to within an hour. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, we have one foot in today and one fit, foot in months from now. So, it, uh, yes, uh, life is good. Beautiful weather. Spring in Kentucky, you, it just doesn't get any better. Um, and we look forward to the boat docking. You know, it's not just the passengers. It is how that boat makes the citizens of Paducah feel. When it docks here in Paducah, there is an excitement in the air. People come down. People bring their families. They bring their lunch. They come to the riverfront. And, and there's an identity there with the river that the river boats bring to life. And, uh, and we're just thankful. We'd, we'd like to have a boat here all the time. Um, <laughs> if you ever want to dock here, if we've talked that many times, I can't believe Sandra hasn't said something about that. We'd love to be a point of debar debarkation at some point in the future. So wait till you see the plans for our riverfront. We have, uh, the future looks very good. Yeah. Thank you. And I don't think we Great. can- Yeah, no, I can't wait to see them. 
And, and I don't think we can talk about travel with also without talking about our Berkeley Regional Airport. It's a great asset for our community to have that people can travel basically one stop, um, one stop in Chicago and into Paducah from anywhere in the world as they were before uh, COVID-19. And of course, we are still continuing to see that. We're working on a new terminal uh, construction for that and uh, the exploring services for Berkeley Regional Airport. So that's a great um, opportunity for more tourists to even be coming in here uh, to visit our community. So, uh, you know, the one closing thing I know um, our community is seeing a lot of worker shortage. Um, John, it sounds like that you were able to employ people to be on your boats to help you. you you're yeah, so Sandra, we, we are. But yeah, sorry, my, um, uh, hopefully I have my connection back, but yeah, we, we have, oh, yeah, we're having a challenge, uh, um, and Michael and I were talking about that today, I mean, we probably have to start doing a few more job fairs, um, but you know, during the height of the pandemic, we had to lay off 700 people, and that's very, very, very painful, especially when they're close family and friends. And so, you know, a lot of them are, you know, trying to come back and everything, but yeah, a labor shortage and almost every business that I talk to, you know, is having that issue, but we are, we are having that issue. So, yeah. Yeah. We're having the, that the, in the our- The good news I will say is if you hear of anybody, yeah, if you hear of anybody that is looking for a position, the good thing is we, uh, we pay for them to get to work, you know, uh, we give them a free room and board for six weeks. It's a forced savings plan. Uh, the money goes right into their the, the, their checking account, and it's a great way for them to save, and it actually leads to a great career. So, yeah, great, thank you. Well, we want to encourage everyone to get vaccinated, and yeah. we want to encourage our small businesses, you know, to continue to look for ways to hire people. We have a jobs board; there are plenty of jobs boards out there. Uh, and also we want to encourage them to employ summer workers. Um, there are a lot of college students that are here that can be helping our businesses to fill their open positions. So Mary, did you have some comment? Oh, you know, I just um, was uh, thinking about the airport and, and thinking about Dennis uh, who, had, who had asked a question and thinking about the river boats and thinking about how we are talking about artwork out there in the, uh, at the Bar new Barclay Regional Airport. So John, you know, we may have to pull in the river boats. We may have to uh, um, do some talking about that. What do you think, Dennis? <laughs> I, th I think uh, the River Discovery Center and the American Queen Steamboat Company, there's a real good partnership there. And, uh, and having a presence at the airport. Right, yep, we agree. There we go. <laughs> We've covered a variety of topics from the riverboats here to Southern Living Magazine to basketball and volleyball and sports and how important all of that is to the makeup of our community and uh, making us a special place and a destination for people to come and visit. So we appreciate your time today. Thank you all for joining us, our distinguished panel of speakers. It was so awesome to see your faces and to hear from you today about how important um, travel and tourism is. And we just wanna celebrate the return of tourism to Paducah. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our guests who joined us today. Thank you, Mary, for partnering with us. We appreciate your support. You can go to padukachamber.org for information about this webinar. And Mary, your website for travel information. Indeed. Thank you. You are our partners, our family. We appreciate you, you all. Give, yeah, you want to give your website? Oh, uh, paducah.travel. Paducah.travel. I was afraid I was going to say it wrong. So Paducah.travel, Paducahchamber.org. They'll get you to where you need to go. John, we'll see you Friday. Gina, we'll see you soon. And Michelle, we'll see you Food Truck Friday. Thank you, guys. That's great. Thanks, everyone. Thank Appreciate Thank it. Bye. Bye.